Today we're going to talk about unit testing our views. Specifically, we're going to cover the client and request factory objects that are built into the testing framework inside of Django. At the heart of Django, what happens is you make a request, and a request object is built using the WSGI components of Python. And that is then sent to Django, which builds on it to more create a full request object our Django framework can understand and act upon. Using the request factory and the client objects, we simulate this exact same thing so we can more easily test small units of code that we write instead of testing Django to then test our code. Go ahead and take a look at our basic market project. If you notice, we have a cart app, and that's where most of our work is going to take place. If you look at the URLs of our market app, everything takes place in cart because we're importing cart.urls. When we look at the cart.urls, we have two URLs that we're going to use. We're going to use the base slash cart and then slash cart slash another URL. Cart is calling a cart view function. Another is calling another cart view function. Then finally, if we'll look at our view functions, we have cart, which takes a request object and just does a render to response and returns our template. If you look a little further at another cart, it's the exact same thing, except we want to require that someone logs in first. That's really all that we need to know about our projects to do our view testing. We're going to go ahead and write our first test to get our feet wet with testing views. First we need to do our imports. We mostly want to look at importing a request factory which comes from the Django test client. This is a good location because in a sense we are going to be simulating a client request. We're just going to be doing it using code. Every test needs a test class. I'm naming this one URL test because we want to test that we get the appropriate status codes from calling our specific URLs. Now that we have our first test function, test factory car, let's start writing our test code. Since we need to send a request object to our view function, we need to instantiate a new instance of the request factory object for us to call appropriately. To get a fully usable request object that Django is expecting, we need to use an HTTP verb upon our URL. In this case, we're going to use the get verb on the cart URL. This runs through a process that builds our basic request object that we can then use to call our cart view, which is exactly what we're going to do now. Every time you execute a view, it returns a response object with all the necessary data in it. Therefore, we need to call our view function directly. In this case, we're going to use our cart view function. It is going to be a it is going to return a response object we can use to test again. As a part of the response object, we also get a status code with, with each response. All we want to do now is verify that the view runs properly, so we should just get a status code of 200. So now that we have that out of the way, let's actually run our test and make sure it passes. Now that we've done our first test, let's dive into the request factory object and see a little bit of what it is doing under the hood. First choice we're going to start is with the get method since it is where everything starts from. As you look at the get methods parameters, you see the only thing required is the path. In the case of our test that we already wrote, it is slash cart. Pass in data or you can even pass in keyword arguments in the form of what might go into a request object. One example is you might use the HTTP X requested with key with a value of XML HTTP request so you can simulate an AJAX call. The next thing we see that we are parsing the URL, the URL parse function actually returns a list with the URL separated out into different parts for easier consumption by the Django framework. Next we set some request constants. Note the request method is stating it is a git request. Then we are following that up by merging in our extra keyword arguments that we've passed into our function into the collection. Finally we're passing the request data to a request function and returning that to populate a request variable in our test so that we can then use that in our views. The next thing we're looking at is our request method that we call at the end of our get method. All it really does is return a WSGI request object populated by our request data, which it populates more of in the base environ method. The base environ method just takes all of the environment variables we've set along the way and combines them with more and then returns them to so the WSGI object can be built. 
and it too returns to the get method, which then returns to our test and which we'll use to call in our view. So basically all we've really done is we've built a big list of key value pairs inside of an object so we can easily pass it around. In a sense, that is all a request in Django really is from the moment you call the website to the moment it calls a view as it builds up this that big monolithic key value set of key value pairs. Finally, let's look at one last piece, and that is the post HTTP verb. If you stare at it a bit, what you notice is that it's mostly the same as the get verb, but it has a couple of extra bits to it. To call a post, you send it a path and some data to a dictionary and pass it to the request, and voila, you're good to go. Really, it's no different than the get. I really recommend browsing around the Django source code looking at the request lifecycle, and in the show notes you can find some links to that. Now that we understand what's going on with our request factory, let's write some more tests. If you recall, one of our views required users to be logged in if they wanted to get there. There are two things that need to be present with a request object for a user to be logged in. They need a session, and a user object needs to be associated with it. With that, let's start our new test. You already know what the first two lines do, so let's look at adding a session to our request. And it is as simple as adding an empty dictionary to the request.session property. The next thing we need is a valid user. The interesting thing about it is, when we check if a user is logged in or authenticated, we check the method is authenticated on the user object itself, and that user object needs to be associated with our request object. The isAuthenticated method is actually only two lines of code, a declaration of the function and a return of true. So for testing a login, we don't actually have to go through the login process. We can just attach a new user to our request object and call it a day. That is it. All we need to do now is call our another cart view function, like we did with the cart view function, and then we can test for a 200 status code. So let's go ahead and run these tests and see if they pass. So now that we know how to test when a user is logged in, we'll see what it takes to test a user is not logged in. If you look at the code, we no longer test if there is a session, and we also use the anonymous user model. The real difference between this and the user model is the isAuthenticated method now returns false with anonymous user. Anonymous user is also what is used by default in Django when someone is not logged in. Also note that we are using the status code of 302 since we know that when someone isn't logged in, they are redirected. Let's go ahead and run these tests. Now we're going to look at the client object with which inherits from request factoring. Client is useful because it actually simulates a full browser request. It's very useful because you can just choose which verb you want to do and give it a path, and it takes care of the rest, returning you a response object. When we were doing the request factory, we would call the view directly, so that whatever URL you gave it, it almost didn't matter. However, with client, we give it a URL, and it actually looks in our URLs file to find the appropriate view to call, and keeps going from there. I noted it inherits from request factory, so when you call your different HTTP verbs on the client object, it actually calls the parent method first, and then almost nothing else. The biggest difference between client and request factory is the request method on the client object. It is big and does a lot of stuff, so I don't really want to go into it. Just know that's one of the key differences. A couple of other things to note is if you need to authenticate, you have a login method attached to the client object, and you can just pass in a username and password of, any, of an existing user, and it'll go through the login process. You can also track all of the redirects that your request makes by passing in a keyword argument of follow equals true. It chains them up, and you can do assertions against that chain. A final note on the client before we actually use it is that it is slower than using request factory because there's a lot more code to run. So if you don't need it for some specific reason, please consider using request factory object instead. It will run a bit faster and helps you be more explicit with what your code is doing. Writing tests using our client object is actually really easy. We don't need to import client because our test case, which we inherit from for our test class, has the client object already created and ready for us to use by simply calling self.client. All we need to do is choose a verb and give it a path like cart. Then after that, we just simply test that the status code is 200 on our response object. We also want to test that we can get to our view if we log in as well. 
First we need to create a new user and then log them in using our convenient login method on our client object. This logs the person in for this request. Note we're using the keyword arguments for username and password. From there we proceed just like above except we use our new path of cart slash another which requires login to be able to get access. And that's it. That is all that we need to do to use our client object for both testing scenarios. Let's go ahead and run both of these tests. That is your overview of Request Factory and the client object when you want to test views. I've only covered a couple of scenarios and in a later video I'm actually going to cover more of the assertions that you have available for further testing your views, not just testing access to the views. There's a lot of different things that you can do, but I just wanted to give you a good strong handle on the basics of testing your views.